Okay, so welcome. This is an awareness through movement lesson focused on the breathing. It's important to keep in mind that in the Feldenkrais method, we do not learn breathing techniques. We don't learn any techniques. We use these lessons as a lens to learn about ourselves. So in that way, when you're doing this lesson or any lesson, make sure that you check in with yourself, that you're not straining or pushing, you're not uncomfortable experiencing any kind of pain. And if you are, stop and rest and rest as long as you need to. Sometimes it's nice just to listen to the flow of the lesson without actually doing any of the movements. And keep in mind that this lesson is there to to help you deepen your connection to yourself. And if that stops happening in any way, uh, then the lesson's done for you. If you have a thin cushion or a folded towel that you may, you might not use it at all, but actually that might be a nice thing to have nearby. So just pause for a second in case you want to get that. Okay. And then if you've got that nearby, for now, settle yourself on your back. If you're wearing glasses, you might want to take them off. If you feel anything that's not comfortable, um, take it off or adjust it so you can be more comfy on your back. And if having your legs long is not a good position for you, then you can keep your knees bent and your feet standing. Have your arms down by your sides and give yourself a few moments to settle your attention down onto the floor. And notice yourself. Notice how easily you feel like you can shift your attention inward. And if that seems at all like a, a bit of a tricky task right now, then make sure to be patient with yourself. And likely by the end of the lesson, you will find that something has shifted for you. Notice that you, you have an interesting way of making contact with the floor. It's likely not entirely symmetrical in your feeling. So notice what kind of pattern you experience of contact with the floor from where it's the, the deepest sensation, the closest pressure into the floor and where it gets lighter where you lose contact with the floor entirely and then where the pressure deepens again. And see the way that you're breathing now. Try not to deepen it or change it. But notice the way that it is. And try to get a sense of what kind of effect your breathing has on different parts of your body. What areas you feel movement. What areas you might actually feel a, a resistance to movement or a certain kind of tightness. What's interesting to you about the way that you're breathing right now? It doesn't seem like you can notice these things without appointing a, a story, a narrative to it. Uh, 
And at the end of the day, that's really what we cultivate in these lessons. It's what makes it a practice is that we, we keep trying to come back to our humanness, the part of us that is, is there and has always been there regardless of the, the contours and the activity of our thoughts. Now bring your attention to your back and notice how much of your breathing feels like it's in the front of you and how much of your breathing feels like it's in the back of you. And notice if that's different on one side of your back than the other. There's a little bit more sense of suppleness on one side. Maybe there's a little bit more suppleness in one side of your chest or your belly. And then for a few moments, extend your attention down into your legs. And notice if one of your legs feels like it's heavier or longer or just different in some way from the other leg. And could you sense, or maybe it's more like imagine some kind of influence or some kind of interaction between your breathing and the position of your legs on the floor. And then perhaps a little less abstractly, notice your two arms and take a few moments to sense or think about the way you experience a connection between your breathing and the feeling of each of your arms through your shoulders. And as you're there feeling your shoulders and your arms, it might be interesting to do a little movement of turning your head left and right really slowly and to get a sense of what kind of effect that has. And then leave your head in the middle and bend your knees and bring your feet to stand. Notice if the kind of contact that your back is making with the floor changes at all when your legs are in this position. And if that somehow changes the feeling of your breathing. And then see what it feels like to breathe as though you were widening the base of your neck. And remember, it's not a technique. It's not uh, something to master. It's a way to start to orient your attention. And if it feels uncomfortable to you at all, then see if you could actually do less. And sometimes doing less means doing such a small amount that you're actually just imagining it, imagining what it would feel like. If you start small and gentle, you might notice that the movement naturally improves if you don't force it. Some of you might find this, this feeling is familiar. Of course, somebody might feel like this is quite abstract. And when you're when you're playing with this idea of widening the base of your neck, do you do you sense that you pull your air in more with one nostril more than the other one? Do you feel like there's more of a, 
movement or a contraction change on one side of your neck than the other. Okay, now leave that and bring your hands onto your chest, high up your chest, just below your collarbones. If you have breasts, that would be kind of on the top of your breast tissue. And you can have your fingertips toward your breast bone, that skinny little bone in the middle of your chest, your breast bone, your uh, sternum. Now, see what happens if you breathe wide into your hands. What's that feel like? And of course, it's natural to have an eval evaluative mind, right? To decide if you if you can do it, if you can't do it, if you're good at it, how good at it are you? And so just keep coming back to the feeling. Oh, that's interesting. I'm I'm feeling the feeling of this thing, or I'm feeling oh, I don't feel that thing. And you're just learning how to notice differences in your sensation. Now you might adapt where your hands are slightly, do your own research and maybe your hands would be a little wider apart, a little higher or lower down. But keep exploring the, the possibilities of a widening in this part of your chest. And then pause with that, let yourself just breathe naturally, comfortably. And now follow your fingertips down your chest bone, down your breast bone, to the place that where your rib cage comes together. And you may or may not notice that there's kind of a little point at the bottom of your chest bone. Don't go pushing around in there, that won't feel very nice. But see if you can get a sense of where the tissue is soft, where your belly is versus where your ribs are, where the bones are. And have your fingers really delicately resting right at that archway where your ribs come together, where that little point is. And first just pause there and with your fingertips, your fingertips like eyes, see what you see. See if you notice any sort of um, shifting or pulsating. You might notice what the temperature is like there. And then gradually see what it feels like to direct your breathing into your hands there. Again, if it's elusive at all, you can adjust slightly where your hands are and see if you can get a little bit more feedback in your sensation. So again, as opposed to making the action stronger, try to expand your listening for more subtlety. Okay, and then leave your arms to rest next to you. You can keep your feet standing as they are. And again, go back to your comfortable natural breathing, but notice what sort of resonance you feel? And is there any kind of echo of sensation from those three places that you in investigated? Does anything stand out in your attention? Now, Take your arms onto yourself again and hold onto opposite elbows. And just rest your two arms on yourself. And then take a comfortable inhale, not particularly long, but see what count that is as you're breathing in. If you can count while you're doing that, but what's, what's your count? Might do it a couple times to kind of 
get get an average. Again, don't don't try to go for your biggest breath, just a sort of a comfortable natural inhale and time it. And then when you feel like you've got a, a, a good easy count there, then a few times do your exhale and count your exhale, see what your exhale time, comfortable exhale time is. And then choose a number that's either, you know, if, if both of those counts are the same, pick that number. If those numbers are uh, a bit different, pick a number in the middle. And come into a pattern, a four part breathing pattern that a lot of you will have experienced in different contexts. But try not to think about it as a, as a, a container. Or a practice. Try to be as organically uh, approach it as organically as you can, so that you breathe in. Let's say your count is four. So you breathe in for four. You hold your breath for four. You breathe out for four, and you keep your breath out for four until you start again inhaling for four. Now I'm saying four, but of course you pick your own timing. Try not to challenge yourself, pick something that's comfortable and easy. Of course, you know, always take a break whenever you need to. If you find that it's difficult, my, my guess is it would be useful to make your count a little bit shorter. And then maybe later you make the count longer. Now, when you're ready, if you have a nice rhythm that you feel like you can maintain, what you'll do is holding your elbows as you are. When you're taking your air in, you'll bring your elbows up in the direction of the ceiling and in the direction of your head. You'll hold your arms there as you're holding your breath. And then as you bring your arms back down, that's your exhalation. Keep your arms back down as you're keeping your exhalation out. And as you're going along at some point, you might switch the holding of your elbows, switch, switch your hands so that the other arm is, the other hand is on top. And as you're going along, check in that you're not contracting elsewhere unnecessarily in your mouth or in your tongue, in your belly, in your back. And what's interesting about the feeling along your chest when your arms are in different positions with your breathing. And then leave that and bring your arms down. If you're comfortable to do so, lengthen out your legs and take a little pause on your back. And then roll over onto your left side and you could either have your head on your arm or on the floor, on a cushion, but have your right knee on the floor in front of you and your left leg straight so that you're kind of on your belly, sort of between your side and your belly and just adjust yourself however you need to so that your arm that you're leaning on is comfortable. It might be nice to have it long alongside your head. It might be nice to have it behind you. Just investigate and see how you can be resting on that shoulder in the most comfortable way. Mm -hmm. And then you can have your right hand uh, in front of you somewhere, your right elbow bent. And take a pause there and come back into your four part breathing and see if you can actually feel a difference in the quality of movement on the right side of your chest versus the left side of your chest. Maybe you continue with the same inhaling for four, holding for four, exhaling for four, keeping your breath out for four, whatever your count might be.
Is there any response in your right shoulder blade from this movement of your air? And then consider if there was a widening of the base of your neck or a widening of the top of your chest or a movement at the archway of your ribs in the front, do, do any of those places stand out particularly in your sensation right now? And then pause for a moment. And you might need to adjust your position slightly. Again, you want to be super gentle. But you're going to see what it's like to bring your right arm up toward the ceiling. And leave it sort of floating in the air toward the ceiling. Have your hand and your wrist be as soft as possible. Make sure that you're not straining your neck, crushing your shoulder in any sort of weird way. Make any adjustment you need to. When you are breathing in, you're gonna see what it feels like to reach toward the ceiling. And then as you're holding your breath, you're going to keep reaching toward the ceiling, gently. And when you breathe out, you're gonna see if you can start to bring the back of your right shoulder toward the floor, even though your arm is still lifted toward the ceiling. Your arm will probably move a bit, but it's not the same as bringing the arm down to the floor. You actually still keep the arm floating up in the air. Have a soft bend in your elbow and let your wrist be soft. And when, you, when your shoulder is going down toward the floor, listen for a sense of rotation happening in the upper part of your chest. And you might actually turn your face to look a little bit toward the ceiling or even toward your arm as you're, as you're sliding your shoulder, the back of your shoulder down toward the floor. Great, and then bring your arm down, rest for a moment on your back and see if there's any sort of influence from that exploration on the way that you feel the floor Of course, breathing's automatic, and but we also have this fascinating ability to control it. And yet there's a, a fairly sophisticated system of interaction with your musculature in your breathing. And uh, depending on how you use yourself in your day-to-day -day life, how you use your musculature in your day-to-day -day life, it can drastically influence how you use your musculature for breathing as well as if you had any sort of scare or trauma, or big impact in your life that might have um, influenced how you hold yourself in respiration. So these are the kinds of things that you can start to get a sense of as you, as you explore, as you listen to yourself in this way. So now come over onto your other side. Come onto your right side. Have your left knee on the floor in front of you. Have your right leg straightish down. Have your left hand on the floor. Maybe your left elbow on the floor, if that's comfortable. So you're sort of kind of on your belly, kind of on your side. Uh, have your head on your right arm, unless that's uncomfortable in any way, and then adjust it. Maybe your right arm is behind you instead. And again, just start by coming back to your four-part breathing. And maybe it's the same count or maybe it's changed a little bit. And again, if it's at all uncomfortable for you to be maintaining the four part breathing, then of course, just maintain your own regular breathing. But do notice now what it feels like on each side of yourself. Some of you might notice that you, you really push into the floor with your breathing. And some of you might notice that you feel a lot of movement in the side that's not touching the floor. And you might start to get some kind of idea about your own um, kind of habitual 
holding or movement pattern of your breathing, right? If you, if you have a certain part of you that seems to be working hard, that could be a bit non-habitual. And the part that is uh, effortless, of course, is probably more habitual. And then when you're ready, you will lift your left arm up toward the ceiling and start to explore the shoulder blade movement in this situation again, so that when you're breathing in, you're reaching your arm toward the ceiling and you might get a sense that your shoulder blade is somehow moving away from your spine. Keep reaching while you're retaining your breath. And then as you're exhaling, let your shoulder blades slide. Maybe it feels like it slides towards your spine. Maybe it slides toward the floor behind you. Um, it could be nice to have your head turned looking in the direction of your hand. And try to find what feels comfortable and pleasant. Notice any other little habits, habits of contracting in your hands or your wrists, habits of fixing your abdomen, anything else like that that might come up that interferes with your ability to slide your shoulder. And then let it go and come and rest on your back again. What's interesting about the feeling of the floor at this point, let your breathing be free, natural. Now bend your knees and stand your feet and interlace your fingers behind your head. your two elbows more or less looking at the ceiling so that your forearms are kind of alongside your head, but not tightly, yeah? And just to further emphasize how much this should not be anything like a, a crunch, imagine that um, there was a beautiful sunset that was happening between your legs. And you just wanted to lift your head to say, oh, let me just see, there's something happening just out in the distance between my legs. So. Lift your head, not as high as you can, just lift your head comfortably away from the floor where you can keep it lifted. And then come back to your four part breathing in that position. And pay attention to the feeling of the retention on both sides. And then when you're inhaling or when you're exhaling, what kind of changes do you notice in the contact that you're making with the floor, the way that your back is pressing into the floor. When you're ready, you can bring your head back down, rest your arms, maybe roll your head a bit left and right, make sure you didn't get any tension built up in there. Notice the way that you see your rib cage just as you're resting here for a moment. The feet are still standing. Can you get any kind of sense of relationship between the movement in the front of your chest and the movement behind your chest? And just take a note of that and we'll look at that again in a second. So, now what we're gonna do is you're gonna roll over and come to hands and knees. If for any reason you're tired or that's not a very nice position for you, maybe you skip this variation and you can just do it in your imagination. But otherwise roll over and come to hands and knees or knees and forearms and put the top of your head down on the floor between your hands. And you know, make some micro adjustments. See that you can feel the support of your legs, right? So that your back or your 
hips don't have to work hard and you choose hands or forearms and then really, really gently start to do a movement of bringing your hips, your pelvis forward in the direction of your head and then back in the direction of your heels. And try to keep the, the front of your ankles soft and supple, your toes supple. And you know, be super delicate with the movement. And you might start to get a sense of what part of your back moves in response to this movement of your pelvis. And you might start to massage the top of your head from your hairline toward the top of your skull. And this might, might be plenty. Again, be really sure that you're not compressing your neck. You've got your arms there for support. Uh, but if you're comfortable in this position, then add in your four-part breathing so that when your pelvis comes forward in the direction of your arms, that's your inhalation. And then you stay there as you're retaining. And as you're breathing out, you're bringing your hips in the direction of your heels and you're staying there with your breath out. And just like you were looking at a moment ago on your back, think about the, the front and the back of your rib cage and the relationship between your chest and your upper back between your shoulders. looking for where you could reduce the effort or make things a little bit more comfortable for yourself. Pause whenever you need to pause and continue when you want to continue. And now, is, do you have any sense of a widening in the base of your neck or a widening across your chest or a, a movement of your diaphragm? where your ribs come together in the front. Listen for those landmarks. And then take a nice rest on your back. Lengthen out your legs again, bring your arms down. And see how your natural breathing is. And then finally come to sit comfortably, cross-legged or otherwise. And I would say two different options would be to either, again, have your arms hugging across yourself, holding onto opposite shoulders, similar to how you did at the beginning, but now more like a hug. That's one option. And then the other option is that you'll have your feet standing and your arms would be hugging your knees. So you can, you can try either of those and see which one's more comfortable. Now, if you're hugging yourself cross-legged or with your legs forward, you're gonna bow your head forward, let your back round, let your belly soften, and let your head hang. Other option is have your feet standing hold on to your knees and bow your head kind of on your knees or between your knees. Okay. And then whatever position you choose, stay there, come back to your four part breathing. And notice now how you can direct your breathing more into your back. What kind of possibilities are there for movement in your back. Try to take your time with your inhalation. Retain the breath. Exhale at the same time. And retain the breath out. And then take a rest in sitting. Let your air move naturally. 
you know, some for a sense of three dimensionality from the front of your chest underneath your arms to the back of your chest to your spine in the back. And then let it go and rest on your back. And feel the way that you're making contact with the floor now. With that pattern of pressure against the floor has changed at all since the beginning of the lesson. Or if there's any shift in your perception of yourself, in the sense of connectivity that you feel through your parts. And also notice without doing the four part breathing, what kind of readiness you experience between your inhale and your exhale. So I personally feel strongly about uh, you having an opportunity to integrate on your own, your own way to make the work your own. However, within the Feldenkrais method, timing is actually really important. So do with it what you will. I'm going to leave you to have your own experience, and I encourage you to, to stay with yourself for at least the next five minutes. And I also encourage you sooner than later to, again, sit, but also to stand and walk a bit and to reflect or listen to the influence of the change in your breathing and your nervous system on how you organize yourself in standing and in movement, even just how it is to look around the room. So thank you for being here and I'll see you soon. Bye for now. <laughs>